everybody, I'm Harriet Cameron, host of Down to Earth with Harriet Cameron, where we believe that the best is yet to come. So join us as we watch this broadcast and follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook. Visit my website, www.harrietcameron.com. Be blessed. Hey everybody, this is Harriet Kamnick, the host of Down to Earth, the show in which we talk about the issues that matter. And today on our show, I want to talk with you about the concept of grace. That's right. Grace is the difference. That's what we're going to talk about. Grace is the difference. And what you ask, might grace make the difference in? Well, that's what we're going to explore in the scripture. And the scripture we have for today is Romans chapter 5, verses 19 to 20. And we're going to show you how grace abounds, how grace is the difference and makes the difference in all that we are going through. We live in a world today where we're tested, we're tried. There's so many things going on that is vying for our attention. There's so many issues around us, even in our personal lives. I might be talking to someone today who might be facing divorce. It could have been a long-term marriage over 10 years, 20 years, and all of a sudden, there it is. It's Splitsville, USA. People are moving, transitioning. There are all kinds of things happening. We're in a season where the whole world seems to be shaken up. What happens during these times? But what about even in our personal lives, in those situations that affect us personally and that impact our personal relationships? What is grace? What is sin? So we're going to talk a little bit about it. I know it's controversial. I know a lot of people today are perhaps saying, well, Harriet, I don't know if I believe. I don't know what I believe. I don't even know if I believe in anything. Well, I'm going to show you how basic this is and that it doesn't require a doctoral degree in divinity. It just requires you being you and being open to listen and to hear. And once you've heard, you'll be able to agree and you'll be able to, to translate this into your life. Amen? Amen. So in addition to the things we do here at Harry Kamek Ministries, which is bringing you down to earth wherever you're watching this, I want to thank you so much for your support. I'm also the founder and executive director of the Exodus Foundation. That is the foundation of the community organization through which we provide services, relief services, to women fleeing violence and children and to women fleeing human trafficking. It's a big deal in our society today, and it is happening at so many intersections as we see our society literally being shaken up by economic policies. And at those intersections of people, public policy, politicians and people, public policy, something gets left behind. And invariably, it's women and children. So when that happens, we're kind of there to help provide shelter housing immediately on the ground to help those who can't help themselves. So join me with that. You can help us by going to my website, harrietcamack.com. From there, there's a link to the exodusfoundation.com. And I just want to thank you so much in advance for that. You can also find my books anywhere on amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com, or wherever you are in the world, you can always find books that I have written. Your support is integral. And it helps us. For more information, go to my website, harrietcamock.com, as well as you can call us, 800-999-1002. <clears throat> Excuse me. To hear more about what we do. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> so I want to tell you a little bit about our scripture today. And it's one of those times that <laughs> we're coming to you in this broadcast, and we're live, obviously. And I just want to tell you a little bit about what we're doing and how we arrived at the scriptures. So each week I search for something just like you, whatever you are going through, chances are I am going through the same thing because we're human, right? So I'm not removed from the situations that afflict all of us. In fact, there is a general generality to all of our lives. So the afflictions, what I refer to as afflictions and what the Bible refers to afflictions are just simply things that we all go through, divorce, uncertainty, economic policies at our intersectionals, intersectionalities in life, the stuff that we go through, the pain we experience in our personal relationships, the uncertainties of the future. We have children. We don't know what's going to happen for the future. They have their own goals. They can't achieve their goals. We're all in this melting pot, this bubble. 
And so each week I, I have to, I find myself searching for answers. And I find myself saying, what do we need to hear this week that is going to take us through and help us to bridge, to survive, to, if you will, have some ease and to understand that these things that come to us are not going to take us out, but that we can survive them. So I search the scriptures and I'm looking for what feels like the right thing. Well, that's what happened with this scripture. As you know, I often talk about stuff from the entire Bible. I visit the Old Testament and the New Testament. So if you were to ask Harriet, why do you do this? Well, I kind of like it. <laughs> and I am looking for that which has resonance with you and I. Here we find our story today imprinted in the story of Romans chapter 5, verses 19 to 20. It talks about grace. And I found that it hit me this week and made me give pause to what we're experiencing. And you see, but Let's talk about romance. I often tell folks this. If, if, if you ever just come to a realization that you want a relationship with God, that you find yourself wondering what is your purpose in life, I encourage you to start at the book of romance. Romance is the roadmap to Christianity. It's literally like a guidepost. It tells you what is, what isn't, what you should, what you shouldn't do. It just guides you. It's not riveting it over your head with a big stick and beating you into submission. That's not what Christianity is about. Christianity is a guidepost. It's saying here is where you go, here is where we miss the boat. The Bible says of itself that it's an example for us to follow. That means the stories we read of in the Bible happen to real people who often miss the mark. And because they miss the mark, we have their stories and their examples to read through it and say, oh, whoa, that happened to me. And here's where we are. So we start today in the book of Romans chapter five. And Romans is in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, Romans. Romans is in the New Testament. And it's talking about sin and grace. And I know it's controversial, but I want to read it to you so that you have an idea of where we're going so you can relate to this and it will resonate and it starts off in verse one where focuses on 19 and 20 but i want to give you how we got here to verses 19 and 20. it says in verse number one of romans chapter five as usual i'm reading from the new king james version and it says therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ Though through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of, of God. And then it says in verse number six, it says, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly, painting a picture of the suffering Messiah. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But here it is in verse number eight. It says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So even when we were unaware, even when we didn't know about grace, even when we didn't understand salvation, Christ still died for us, knowing that at some point the propitiation for his sin, for our sin, was taken on in his likeness. For even when we were enemies, in verse 10, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And then in verse number 12, it says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world through Adam, the first Adam, yeah? Adam and Eve were in the garden, right? And just as sin entered the world through Adam's disobedience to God, when God told him and his wife Eve don't, eat of the fruit of the tree, and such sin came into the world. Therefore, death spread to all men because all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. This is just setting the stage for where we're going. But the free gift is not like the offense, the Bible says in verse 15 of Romans chapter 5. For then, if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift of the peace and the grace of one man. 
And then here it is. It says in verse 17, For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in through the one. But here is the thing. In verse number 19, it says, For if by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But here's the thing. Here's what I want us to focus on in verse 20. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit this to you today. And I ask you, Lord, let me decrease so that you might increase. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts find acceptance in your sight. My Lord, our strength and our redeemer. We need grace and grace is the difference. And we ask for grace on those who are hurting today. We ask for grace for someone encountering divorce, someone encountering separation, someone who has to be separated from work, someone who has to be separated from a job, someone for whom the fires of hell and sickness and disease have come. Grace, I speak grace. Father, let your grace abound in our lives even as we struggle through things and situations and relationships that people have let grace make the difference and we give you all the praise and all the glory and everyone says amen so then the question is what is sin that's a word we don't like to hear because it's controversial and we like to say well they say i'm a sinner and i don't like labels Neither do I, frankly. But you know what? I'm a sinner myself. I'll stand before you and I'll be as transparent as possible. I miss the mark every minute of my existence. Every day I have to ask for grace myself. I have to ask for grace to continue. I have to ask for grace for forgiveness for the things I think and for the things I say. Therefore, if grace is all around me, and if sin is everything that I do, it sounds to me like I need grace. So then what is sin? Sin then is disobedience. Sin then is disobedience to the law of God. So what are the laws of God? Well, he kind of told us in the Old Testament, don't kill, don't hurt. And then Jesus in the New Testament told us the one thing I ask is that we love one another. Kind of like that is breaking the law of God you find that when we love one another, we are more forbearing of one another. We are more what? Say it, gracious to one another. So grace is the difference. So what is grace? Grace is like a cloak. Grace is a condition that is bestowed upon us by the sufferings of Jesus Christ, by the work that Jesus did. So we're not entitled to it. God doesn't have to forgive us. And I know today the intellectual argument reigns among many in ivory tower establishments. And a lot of us are trying to ratify what we believe and what we know inside of us to be true with what we see exampled by people who say they're Christian. Today, it's not uncommon for people who claim to be Christian to be the ones beating people. They're literally ramming it down our throats, literally telling us. But then you look at their lives and they're as imperfect as can be. And you say, I don't want any part of that. I don't want to be a Christian and I have to live in such strict confines of life. That was never the intention of Jesus Christ. Far be it from any of us who purvey the gospel to come and tell you that you need to live only in this way. And if you don't, you can't. That's why grace abounds. There is grace and more grace. It sounds to me today that what we need is more grace. We need grace that bestows and grace helps us to understand. Grace helps us to be loving. I made some notes and I want to share them with you. Grace helps us to be loving. Grace helps us to understand. Grace gives us hope. Grace brings us faith. It helps us to walk through the rigors of life and the very things that we have to go through. Grace helps us to understand why 
we're laying on a hospital bed and the doctor comes to tell your loved one that this is it. Grace is what helps us to walk through. They pack up everything you have at work on your desk and put it in a little box. And after 30 years, that's all they're gonna give you. Grace helps you to not come back and be postal. Come on now. Grace, you walk home and you weren't supposed to be at home and you thought you were gonna surprise your spouse and you walk in and there they are with a neighbor. Grace, my brothers and sisters, grace. When you look in your account and you've been hacked and you know who took it, it's not a hacker. It's someone who is a family member. Grace helps us. We need grace. Grace is a cloak. We wear it. it, it it's something that speaks. You can't help. Have you ever been around someone who is so forgiving? Someone who when you're around them, you feel good? Have you ever done something? Let me put it this way. Have you ever hurt someone so badly that you can't even confront them or look in their faces? And when you do come around them, instead of picking up a gun and shooting at you, instead of yelling or screaming at you, they just look at you and smile. That's grace. What you did to them was so egregious, was so horrible, that even you yourself can't live with yourself. But yet you went to them and they bestowed grace upon you. That's what we need in our world today. As we look around our situation, as we look around our world and we look at what we're going through, we need grace. More of us need to be more gracious. I dare say more preachers need to show grace. Please, when you're preaching to the people, please tell them about the grace of Jesus Christ. You may not understand what happens to a person. You can't explain everybody's sexual orientation. You can't dictate to people how they should live. God gave us free will. Why are we trying to wrestle the free will back from God? God bestowed free will. You think when he created Adam and Eve, he didn't know they were going to mess up? But he did it anyway. That was grace. That was love of God confounded to us. It still confounds us. We still can't accept. Why did God love people so much that he forgave us even before we did it? No, we need to start showing some grace. You can't tell a woman what to do. Do you know what is going through the machinations of her mind? She finds herself pregnant. Maybe it's a bad marriage. Maybe she's not even married. Maybe it would interrupt her life. Maybe, just maybe, it is not convenient. What if she were raped? What if it were incest? How dare us come and impose our sanctimonious self-righteousness on people when the scriptures here tell us where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. How dare us try to wrestle that away from the Messiah who has already done the work. God did it. He did it all. He sent Jesus to explain to us and here we are fighting over something that is already a finished work that is already done. Do I have a witness up in here? Grace and more grace is what we need. Now, grace doesn't mean that you have the right to go out and kill, the right to go out and murder, the right to go out and rape. No, that's not grace. That's you choosing your free will to do something and then you will have an encounter with the law, as you should. But what happens when people are contrite? Give them the option. When they're contrite, I'm not talking about these fake confessions that we see in jail when they recognize that they're about to go away for a long time. I'm talking about the contriteness that as a result of my actions, I brought irreparable harm to someone else. That's where grace comes in. Grace, therefore, is a cloak that we wear. And it's a condition, I say, I argue, because we need to wear it. Because grace comes as a result of me recognizing that someone hurt me so bad, I couldn't do anything about it. Over time, I began to think of how bad their actions were. After a while, time erases the pain. Time erases the guilt. And after a while, you look at the person and you realize that they're more damaged than what their actions had intended. That's what grace is. 
grace is a cloak. It behooves all of us then to start thinking of ourselves, to start thinking, put it in context. So you might be sitting there and you're like, okay, that sounds good and all, Harriet, but what about me? Well, put it into context. Imagine you have a son and you send your son for people who don't even like him. They don't like his color. They don't like his ethnicity. They don't like how he sounds. They have issues with his background. They have issues with his class. They have issues with all kinds of societal structures, but you still sent him anyway to overcome. That is grace. It seems to me then that grace is the foundation. Grace is the difference in our lives. Somebody hurt you, and I'm not telling you that someone hurt you so bad that you need to go look for grace. No, the person who is wronged is the one who needs to extend the grace. That is how you know that it is real. Here is Jesus. They beat him. They crucified him. They whipped him so hard, 39 stripes across his back, that his flesh was flying all over the place. And still he extended grace on the cross to the, to the two men on either side of him. Grace abounds. There is God sitting up in heaven watching all of this happening and turned his back. So even Jesus had to say, have you forgot me? That is grace. Same thing happens with you and I. We're parents. We tell our children, don't hang out with that crowd. How many times? We tell them, don't be with that person. And yet they do it. And you and I have to watch as they are hurt. And then they come back after the hurt. You have to get the phone call to go pick them up from the jail. You have to get the phone call to take them into rehab. You have to pay the bill. After you have told them not to hang out with that person, not be with that person. Grace, then they come to you. You know why they come to you? Why do the kids come back? Tell me. They know you have grace. They know that the love that you have for them is so powerful. It overlooks everything that they could have done. They know it's grace. That's grace. It's like you hurt someone you claim to love. Your spouse. You went and slept with someone you shouldn't have been with. And you can't even face them, but they come back. When you come back, that's grace. Grace is deep, my friends. We don't extend it enough. Some preachers like to say grace is not a license to sin. I like to say that grace is the difference. Grace and more grace. I want more of us to talk about grace because the Bible says right here that we are sin about. Look at our world today. You have one man over in Europe tearing the whole place up because he has an ego problem because he wants to batter another country filled with 41 million people. He has killed off at least one third of the population and is trying to annihilate even as far as over here. You have one man who is doing it. We need grace and more grace. It's a time when we can't understand. We need grace. Grace brings us hope. So what is the hope that we have today? That where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. So they hurt you. So they took your family member away. They hurt them. They let them out of jail so they could go back and hurt your family members. They even came back and hurt you. What do you do? Grace, I can't understand it. I am not asking you that it's going to happen immediately. It's over time. So in other words, or patience then. Grace gives us what? Patience through the trials, through all the afflictions, through all the stuff that we go through. What does grace do? It improves us. And it gives us patience to accept that that person hurt me so irreparably harmfully. I can't do anything about it. But at the same time, I don't want to live with the memory of that pain forever. I don't want it to destroy me. So I'm going to step back from it. And I'm going to heal myself. And you let grace do the work. So I made some notes about this. Grace is the light in a dark room. Grace shows us all the ways in which God is displeased. Sin is disobedience to God's law. And as much as there is spitefulness, jealousy, evil, and wickedness that comes against you, because most of the stuff that comes against us comes 
from sin comes from spitefulness and jealousy. You better watch out for that green-eyed jealous monster that rises up and comes against us. The wickedness, the thieving, the murder, all that wicked stuff that comes against us, all the separation that comes against us. Grace is the difference. So let me just pray for you. And if you believe that this message is for you, give me a call at 800-999-1002. Let us pray for you. Let us believe with you that you will find the grace to make it through this week. I don't know what situation you're going to have to go through. I don't know what is going to be so painful that you have to walk through it. But in the name of Jesus, I speak grace. It might be you who find yourself in need this week because they gave you a bad report. Grace, you said, I've done all I could do. I ran, I ate well, I did everything. Grace is what is going to take you through. So they give you a bad report. So they tell you they're going to leave you. Okay, grace will make you through it. So they tell you that I don't want you to work here anymore. Grace is going to take you through. So some child comes home and says, I don't feel like going back to college. I don't feel like I should do this. I want to go hang out with Snake over there and so on. And I'm going to get all these tattoos. Grace is what's going to take you through. So Father, in Jesus' name, I speak grace on my brothers and sisters. Help them this week. Let grace be their anchor this week as we go through. I pray for our country, the United States, and I pray grace upon us. Let the grace of God overshadow us, overtake us in the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Be blessed, everybody for watching Down to Earth with Harriet Cameron. For more information on our products and our books, visit my website at www.harrietcameron.com. And remember to follow us on Twitter and on Facebook as you receive daily inspirational messages. And why don't you send us a seed? If the Lord lays it on your heart to send us a seed, remember the scripture in Ephesians 3 and 20 that says, unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly, for all that you can ask or think for so many years. That scripture has enlivened me and empowered us here at Harry Kamek Ministries. So thank you so very much. And remember to watch us again on this network. Hey there, everybody. This is Harriet Kamek, the host of Down to Earth. I'm an author and speaker, and I wanted to talk with you for just a few seconds about what the scriptures have done for me. Here's a scripture in the Bible. It's found in the book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, and it says, Now unto him who is able.